any increases in overtime costs. We've had injuries in the police department that resulted in overtime increases in the past year. You know, we anticipate that this year we hope to have a full staffing on for all our members, and then, you know, those overtime costs should not be there this year. But would you not say 100% overtime is a little out of line? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking on, on the warranty. What does it say? I think, uh, Mr. Younger, the oh. gentleman referred you to page 11 of oh, the uh, warrant okay. that was mailed. Okay. I might be jumping ahead because I know we're talking about the police department. But I if you're looking at the it. overtime, oh, the increase in their overtime rate versus, and also the special details? No, I'm not including special details. I'm just including uh, regular pay versus overtime pay. Uh, in certain cases, you have overtime of, um, it, you know, depends on the officer. In certain cases, you have officers who are only put, putting in maybe five, six, seven thousand dollars in overtime versus other ones that are larger. I mean, I, I don't understand. The question regarding well, the like I said, maybe I might have been ahead of myself, and it, uh, in particular, I'm referring to the fire department. But I just didn't want to get up and ask the same question again, so I thought I'd okay. include it all okay. in one. That's what we basically explained. Is that's the reason why we've done examinations of it in the cost, but it's also your fixed costs. If you increase your personnel, you're going to increase the benefit costs there. So those also factor in the overall picture. Chief O'Brien. Just for Mr. Chief O'Brien is the chief of the fire department. Yeah, O'Brien Fire Chief. Uh, part of the reason why, the, the, particularly this past year for the fire department, the, the overtime rate was excruciatingly high was the fact we ran a second station due to the reconstruction of the fire station, and we ran a double station. We ran 168 hours times three um, of overtime for almost 15 weeks. Um, that's why it's at 100 percent. Normally it's not that high. Mr. Reitmeyer? Yes, sir. George Reitmeyer, Mead. I'd like to ask uh, either the town administrator or the chief of police how many cars, cruisers, and unmarked vehicles we now have in the police department that we own. Chief Pernell. We have the same amount that we've had for a couple of years. There's 13 cars. Uh, we have uh, five unmarked cars, animal control, and the rest are unmarked. 13 plus 5 plus. No, no, no. 13 cars total. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Sylvia. I have a question through you to Mr. Dow. Is he sitting down there still? Mr. Dow is here. Uh, I just uh, am interested in, are we, or I shouldn't say we, I mean the uh, overtime by the police on special detail are supposed to be paid by the contractors or what have you. Is the town uh, right up to date on receiving those payments or how much are, are these people in arrears? Mr. Dow, can you answer that question? Oh, Chief Cornell again. Uh, we usually do the collecting for the town and uh, I'm pretty sure it's right up to date. There's nobody in arrears. Uh, you do the collecting? That's correct. Mr. Pasquale. On the subject of details, I envision with this expansion of the Route 62 and concurrent with that, the upgrade of the North Street and Main Street intersection, an inordinate amount of police request on our police department by the contractors. Therefore, there's just a handful of policemen and also there's temporary ones that they call in because I've even seen them in other towns doing service there too. Are we gonna be in a position whereby we got fatigued policemen who have been working details for the contractors and then we gotta call somebody on overtime to backfill to do our regular police work? So has anybody sat down and ask the state or whoever's going to do the work how much they're going to need for traffic control for these two projects because I'm, I'm telling you there's not going to be one policeman there it's got to be at least three or four along route 62 to direct the traffic and another couple up there so there's five out of the police force of 31. 
So that's 16% of the force. Has that happened yet? Chief Purnell. No, but that's in the works. We're, we're going to sit down and discuss uh, public safety uh, when they start getting going with this project. I still have enough sufficient personnel to handle four or five people. Through the chair, please. When I made a statement that I see police people in our town and other towns, are there going to be police from other towns coming in here to service? Well, that's a possibility if we can't fill the details. We could have, uh, we have mutual aid with other communities, and therefore they provide uh, services, police details. The motion is for 2,307,155. Is there any further discussion? Mr. O'Brien. I'm still the same person. Uh, Chief, Chief O'Brien got up and spoke concerning the, uh, the overtime budget for the fire department. I didn't know we were discussing that, but since he did, he's left it open for discussion for the time being, I guess. Uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, a question to the Chief. Uh, was there not supposed to be some compensation from the contractor because he went over on his time and we had problems with the floor so that we couldn't put the equipment back in place? We came up with some added costs there someplace. And I was under the impression, uh, somebody said I was wrong earlier tonight, but I was under the impression that the contractor was to pick up some of this cost. Please uh, expand on that. Uh, the chair will allow us to, under one condition, and that is that you don't raise the same question again when we're dealing with the fire department budget. Uh, Mr. Younger. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I know you didn't. Thank you. Uh, since I don't receive automatic raises, I have to prove my worth tonight. Um, basically, right now we're in li we're in litigation right now regarding uh, the floor situation, and obviously one of the issues involved is the uh, payment of the uh, funds that were expended for the firefighters. Thank you. Mr. Rowe. Dana Rowe, 39 Willow. Uh, we have four uh, federally funded cops program now, and they're going to hire another one. How long does that run, and do we have to pick up that pay when it runs out? Chief Purnell. Uh, the grants are covered uh, for three years. We get $75,000 per person. That's $25,000 a year. And we just got an extension for an additional three years on those people we have on board right now. On the motion for $2,307,155. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, unanimous. Article 33, I mean line 33. Mr. Moderator. That we know. I move to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,730,870 to fund the sum of $106,037 from ambulance revenue and to transfer the sum of $30,950 from free cash for a total of $1,867,859 to fund the fire department budget as specified on lines 33 through 35 as printed in the sponsor recommended column of the warrant. You heard the motion that the finance committee have a recommendation, Mr. Jones, please. Finance, <laughs> finance committee, Ren. Mr. Moderator. Does the Board of Selectmen have a recommendation, Mr. Vino? Mr. Moderator, the Board of Selectmen recommend. Gentlemen on the aisle, please state your name and address, sir. William O'Neill, 40 Linder Road. Um, the gentleman previously brought up pages 10 and 11, the overtime for the fire department. Is that overtime expressed in either the 98 or the 99 figures here? Under a uh, Line item 33, how does that relate to the requested amount for this year? Or, sorry, for uh, year 2000. Can anybody answer the gentleman's question? Did you understand the question? Chief O'Brien. Yeah. Did you understand the question, Chief? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing your point. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Um, 
the gentleman previously had brought up the fact that there was a lot of fire over time, and you expressed you said that was because of running two stations. Correct. We are, okay, so was that money for the overtime in the figure for the 1999 budget that's listed here? Oh, I see. No, no, that was um, done in reaction to that the essentially the central fire station had been closed. That situation has been resolved, and it would not show up in this next budget fiscal um, 2000. Okay, so the the items, so the say that one million eight hundred sixty-five thousand Brady for ninety-eight, one million seven hundred fifty thousand for ninety-nine. So that didn't include any of that overtime. Yes, well, the, the bottom line budget, yes, includes overtime to approximately one third of the salary budget thereabouts. Okay. So, so of that number, you're looking at somewhere around uh, one third and the salary lines right, okay. to be so, overtime. And okay, that's so for that callback, filling in vacations and sick time, et cetera. It's to maintain okay. a four man shift and for callbacks. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Thank Sylvia. You. In reference to this uh, transplanting the fire department over to Main Street or wherever, <coughs> excuse me, did we ever collect any money from the contractors of that famous floor over there in the central station? I believe that question was asked and answered, but oh, I don't was know it? how the town, oh, I'm sorry. town administrator yep. answer it again. Yeah, well, I checked sure. with town council. They haven't called back tonight. So we haven't uh, received anything yet, but we're in litigation. Oh, it's in litigation? That's what the town administrator said. Gentlemen, and Mr. Pasquale, if, if I don't, I'm not John Pasquale, traffic. I'd like to ask something about this EMS program, because I read Article 15. It's coming up, and it's, it's looking for $200,000 for a, a revolving account for some EMS for what we call non-emergency service. Is this, I don't want to draw the article into it, but it mentioned EMS services, and I want to make certain that this here is fine.